So if you did the last topic, which you should have done before, which was completing the Gostrad elimination, they basically will have the outline of what they're doing and want you to fill in the information as to like what they did and then possibly fill in the boxes. Now, if you do the full complete Gostrad um, elimination on your own, it'll make filling in the boxes and all their steps a lot easier because they are going to follow the same exact order that I've been teaching you, which is to first get this guy to a one, then get this guy to a zero, get this guy to a one, and then get this guy to a zero, and whatever you end up with over there will end up being your solution, okay? As long as you are following that pattern in the previous topic, you will be able to complete their Gauss chart elimination. Now here, <clears throat> We have to do it ourselves. So they are going to either walk you through everything um, or they'll just ask you for the final answer. Okay, but let's, we must show all these steps. Okay, so first is the augmented matrix. Now that means I'm going to write equation one as my line one. And I'm going to do the coefficients of x, coefficients of y, and then the constants. So this becomes negative 5, negative 30, and 25, negative 6, negative 34, and 24. Now once I have um, this, we're going to start working with the first entry to change this guy to a 1. So I want this one to be a 1. How do we do that? We multiply by the reciprocal. So negative 1 fifth, or 1 over negative 5, same thing row 1 to give me my new row 1. That means this will become positive 1, positive 6, and negative 5. Now if you need to multiply these things in the calculator individually to find these numbers, that is fine. Just do what you got to do to figure out what these new entries will be. Row 2 is not changing, so I'm going to keep that one exactly the same. Next, we're going to try to change this one to a zero. That has to go next. So in order to change it to a zero, I turn that one into a positive six so that when I add them together, I get the zero. So positive six times row one plus row two will give me my new row two. So then positive six times each of these guys. It's going to be positive six, positive 36, and negative 30. Row two goes directly underneath. And if I combine these, I get 0, 2, and negative 6. So that's going to replace my row 2. Then the third thing I need to worry about is I need to worry about getting this guy into a 0. I'm sorry, into a 1. I put the wrong symbol. I don't know if you noticed that, but... I like to use boxes when I'm changing something to a 1 and then circles when I'm trying to change something into a 0. It just helps me remember what, what my goal was. So here I change it to a 1, which means I need to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to do 1 half times row 2 to get my new row 2. So 0 times a half is still 0, 2 times a half is 1, and negative 6 times a half is negative 3. Row 1 is not changing in this step, so I'm just going to rewrite it. Next, we need to focus on changing this guy to a 0. Okay, So, I need to turn this one into a negative 6, so when I combine it with a positive 6, it will become 0. So, I'm going to do negative 6 times row 2 plus row 1 give me my new row 1. So I'm going to do, um, let's see, negative 6 times 0 is 0, that will become negative 6, that will become positive 18. Row 1 goes directly underneath it, and then I combine them together. So I get 1, 0, and 13. So row 1 becomes 1, 0, and 13. Row 2 is not changing, so it will stay exactly the same. And so then now, this becomes x, no y's, equal to 13, no x's, 1y, equal to negative 3. 
So if it wants you to give the answer in this form, you're done. If it wants the answer in point form, make sure you put your x coordinate first and your y coordinate second. So whether it wants your response this way or this way. Or if it asks you for a variation of these steps, um, you have everything that you need on your paper to fill out anything that they ask you for.